with the views of Vladimir Suzdal, Tereslav Zaleski, and Yuri Polsky's architecture, and uh, photographs of uh, Paul Teratsky and uh, Lanin, Morozovsky, Bianchi, Dmitriev, and other photographers whose names speak volumes to us. The collection includes both bound albums and the separate photo prints. An array of prints was gathered into albums during scientific and technical treatment of the collections. And uh, there are also large format albums. Some of them are bound uh, in uh, leather and uh, velvet uh, covers, and uh, some of the albums uh, have uh, the gift inscriptions to Konstantin Konstantinovich and Konstantin Nikolaevich. Some of the inscriptions uh, were somehow tried uh, to be deleted or erased, uh, most obviously by uh, the keepers uh, to maintain them in those times uh, when the uh, majority of uh, collections belonging to the imperial family were destroyed. Here is a cover of uh, Nikolaev city photography. Well, not much is seen there, but when we look at the original, the letters are imprinted there, and they say the album of Nikolaev devoted to Grand Prince Konstantin Nikolaevich, His Imperial Highness, and that was uh, an engraved inscription and uh, it was uh, really scratched off together with the cover, most obviously again with the goal to preserve what was inside the album. The album with the landscape on the Danube River, as you can see, also we see the holes, uh, so the inscription was uh, somehow disattached. But irrespective of the attempts uh, of uh, the keepers, a lot of materials were written off, some of them were given to other collections, uh, whereas others uh, are just missing. And uh, by the 1990s, uh, around uh, 1,500 photographs uh, had been written off uh, in the collections. All photographs uh, with the imperial family members uh, were taken away from the archives in the 1930s, and uh, a lot of photographs uh, done by the Grand Princes themselves were written off. Miraculously, the negative with the wife of Elizaveta Mavrikevna, the wife of Grand Prince Konstantin Konstantinovich, is preserved, and we are lucky to have uh, the two Talbotypes uh, preserved in our archives, uh, despite uh, the difficult destiny of uh, the collections. But again, let's go back to the question how they found their way to the collection. Larry Schaff uh, made uh, an interesting uh, suggestion that uh, it uh, might have been connected with the fact uh, that uh, beloved uh, uncle of uh, Talbot uh, served uh, diplomat uh, at the diplomatic uh, course uh, in St. Petersburg. But that is uh, not very likely because it happened 20 years before the photographs were made. So we should maybe look for the answer in uh, the biography of the owners. So Talbot types belong to the early part of the collections and uh, they are likely to belong to Konstantin Nikolaevich, the son of Emperor Nicholas I, who did a lot for the development of Russian military, maritime, navy, and uh, he received uh, diverse uh, education and uh, upbringing. And uh, it is uh, not uh, surprising that this uh, popular and progressive innovation was noticed by him, and uh, he really valued uh, photography a lot, and uh, before lunch we heard uh, that uh, he valued it uh, from early age, and he traveled a lot, uh, so it also contributed to enriching his uh, photographic collection. And uh, from the early age, uh, his father made him head of the uh, Russian Navy, and in 1834 he received his first uh, maritime rank, uh, and uh, next year, at eight, uh, he carried out his first uh, maritime voyage, and uh, he visited uh, 
many cities of Europe, Palestine, Constantinopolis, and uh, England as well. In the 1840s and 50s, uh, he visited uh, England many times. And in 1845, uh, the training of uh, the young Grand Prince uh, were stopped and uh, he devoted the whole year to maritime expeditions and uh, he uh, went to France, uh, Spain and uh, England and uh, in 1848 he also visited uh, England and uh, on the way he visited Altenburg uh, to meet his uh, fiancée Alexandra Frederica and uh, on the 25th of December 1856, he left uh, Petersburg uh, and uh, spent some time uh, in Hanover with Hanover Queen, the sister of his wife, uh, then uh, uh, with her parents in Saxon, uh, Altenburg, uh, Dresden, Weimar, Stuttgart, and uh, then Switzerland and Nice, uh, and uh, then Paris, and uh, then on the way back to Russia, visited England again. So we have to bear in mind uh, that Konstantin Nikolaevich was head of uh, the Russian Navy, and it all happened in the time of uh, true reform uh, in uh, Russian uh, Navy, uh, because uh, the uh, ships, uh, the vessels uh, changed their structure, and uh, now they b were built uh, in a totally different uh, ways. Uh, uh, borrowing the technologies uh, from uh, abroad. And uh, though it is hard to say when talbotypes uh, were bought and uh, the composition of the album does not help us to answer this question, the album is formed from the array of different uh, prints. And uh, there are prints of earlier period and uh, there are certain inscriptions on the back sides uh, of Konstantin Konstantinovich Romanov, so that is already the older period of the collection. So we cannot uh, somehow date the Talbotypes uh, and uh, connect them with any of the trips uh, particularly. But I believe that uh, they were more likely to uh, be bought in the second half of uh, the 1840s. And uh, the album has also photographs of Germany, Nice, uh, Switzerland, Paris, Stockholm, Belgium, and and uh, other cities and countries. Interestingly, both Talbot types uh, fix the uh, architecture of the same site in Oxford, the well-known uh, Christchurch College. It might have been connected with some personal preferences of the Crown Prince. And uh, Galina Bluzhnevska spent a lot of time and effort to study these uh, photo collections of uh, marble palace library. And starting with the second half of the 1990s, uh, she was actively involved in identification of the materials from this collection, and uh, she tried uh, to understand uh, which part uh, was contributed by Konstantin Nikolaevich, and uh, she believed that uh, the Marble Palace Library archives uh, started to be formed not earlier than the mid-1850s, and she believed uh, that the earlier materials were photographs of uh, Peter's Work, uh, uh, photographs made by Yuard, uh, photographs of Sevastopol right after the Crimean War, a photo album from Orenburg uh, via Haiva to Bukhara, and uh, 28 uh, photo prints uh, made in 1855 uh, during the expedition of uh, Colonel Ignatiev. But somehow these two Talbot types uh, were overlooked uh, by Galina Dluzhnevska. That's why she believed uh, that the collection was started to be formed in the 1950s. But now we can definitely say that two Talbot types uh, with the views of Oxford are new chronological marking of the first uh, contributions to Marble Palace uh, Library and the beginning of this collection formation belongs to the second half of the 19 of the 18 sorry 40s apart from that uh, these photographs enrich not only our knowledge of uh, the crown prince's uh, collections but are also the lower part of the photographic uh, border of the collections per se and i would like to also mention that all the photographs that i have shown you apart from the crown prince's uh, portraits uh, that have been extracted 
belong to the archives of the Institute for the History of Material Culture of the Russian Academy of Sciences, and you, I believe, can see that they are unique materials, and they are highly valuable, and they stand apart from other collections and materials of our archives, and this representative selection of photo documents is such that using the material of this one collection, we can see the history of photography starting with the 1840s to 1918. And of course, we are far from saying that we have started these collections. We always find something new, and its uneasy fate has left us with a lot of questions in terms of its attribution and identification. Thank you very much for your attention.